Um, as Paul said, I'm going to talk about what happened on the big picture of the public finances yesterday. Um, I guess if you're looking for a theme for yesterday's budget, it might have been a soft drinks can. And in the context of the public finances, probably one that's being kicked down the road. The overall picture yesterday, as Paul said, was that the underlying picture of the public finances got significantly weaker than it had been in November. And in particular, the OBR revised down how that much they think productivity is going to grow over the next few years, and that had a very detrimental impact on the amount of tax revenues the government is going to get in. On top of that, the OBR revised down again their expectations of how much the reforms to disability living allowance, switching over to personal independence payments, that's now ex expected to raise even save even less than they thought before. Um, that's adding to the problems facing the Chancellor. Slightly offsetting that, there was good news in terms of lower debt interest payments, reflecting lower levels of inflation and lower expected uh, guilt rates. But the overall picture for Mr Osborne by 2019 was that borrowing would have been £13 billion higher had he stood up and done absolutely nothing in his statement yesterday, and £17 billion pounds higher by 2020. So that was the background to where he started with the OBR forecast. What he chose to do was actually a package of significant giveaways in some areas, and those amounted to about £8 billion by 2019, but it's worth saying that a number of those measures actually will cost more in the longer term than is apparent from the scorecard yesterday. And those included things like the headline-grabbing cuts to income tax, capital gains tax, fuel duties and business taxes, as well as additional support for saving. More than offsetting that bad news on the economic forecast and those new giveaways was a package of measures that he announced yesterday. And I will come back to those in due course uh, to think about what those measures were and how much they really affect the longer term picture for the public finances. George Osborne has three rules uh, for governing the public finances. The welfare cap, which requires him to keep a particular measure of spending on working age benefits below a self-imposed nominal cap. He has the supplementary debt target, which requires that debt should fall as a share of national income every year. And the fiscal mandate, which requires him to achieve a budget surplus by 2019, and every year thereafter, uh, provided normal times continue. So starting with the welfare cap, in November he had already breached this in three of the five years in the forecast horizon. Um, but he was actually in November still it, within his cap in 2019 and 2020. The news yesterday was that he's managed to get a clean sweep of breaches throughout the forecast horizon now. Um, so that one's a uh, bit in the dust. The second target, the supplementary debt target, he was on course to meet in November, um, but it probably won't have escaped anyone's notice that the forecast yesterday suggested that he's now on course to miss that this year. Um, so the OBR's forecast is that at the end of this month, debt will be higher as a share of GDP than it was at the same point last year in breach of the supplementary target. And that leaves the fiscal mandate as the last man standing. And yesterday's figures do indeed suggest that he is on course to meet the fiscal mandate of having a surplus on the overall budget by 2019. And looking at the figures for borrowing, that is being brought about by a significant turnaround in the picture for borrowing between 2018 and 2019. Uh, so one and a half, a change in borrowing um, from being 1% of GDP borrowing in 2018 to a half a percent surplus by 2019. In a longer historical context, that would be the ninth largest year-on-year -year change in borrowing uh, that we've seen since 1949, or the sixth largest change in structural borrowing since 1975. So it's quite a large uh, single-year change compared to what we have been used to in the past, but not completely unprecedented. Um, but that does beg the question of how has he managed to do this in the presence of such significant downgrades in the economic forecasts and the giveaways that he's announced. So I will spend a few minutes now um, talking about exactly how he's done that. Um, before I do that, and as Paul said, I'm inevitably here going to focus on the precise numbers um, because George Osborne quite clearly has those in mind when he was making his policies before yesterday. Um, but it is worth saying that the, the much bigger picture is that George Osborne probably will have uh, presided over one of the most significant reductions in public sector borrowing over his period uh, as chancellor that we've seen in recent modern history, um, albeit starting from a historically high level. 
But looking specifically at the figures for 2019 then, so in November, the OBR's forecast suggested that he would have a surplus of £10.1 billion in 2019. And yesterday's numbers said that that surplus will now be slightly larger at £10.4 billion. Um, so far, so good. That looks like really he's back in about the same position he thought he was in November. But looking at the underlying figures um, reveals some interesting uh, patterns. The effect of changes to the economic forecast if George Osborne had done nothing would have been to increase borrowing by £13 billion, putting him in deficit in 2019. On top of that, George Osborne announced a package of spending cuts and uh, spending increases and tax cuts that would have given away a further £8 billion. And those uh, spending cuts and tax increases, actually some of those might cost a little bit more in the longer run than they do in 2019. Offsetting those, he set out specific tax increases and spending cuts um, that will raise uh, slightly more than that, about £10 billion in 2019-20. But it's worth saying that many of those measures that raise taxes or cut spending in that year probably won't raise as much or save as much in the longer term as they do in 2019-20. That, that set of measures would still have left him with a small deficit. So there were two more things he did yesterday um, to get himself back to that £10 billion surplus. The first was to pencil in unspecified cuts to public service spending in 2018-19. Um, he says those are going to come from efficiencies. And the second was to move money between years in his forecast. So this is moving tax revenues into 2019 and moving, in particular, capital spending out of 2019. So he's pulled this capital spending forward. He has pushed some tax revenues that would have come in in 2017 and 2018. He's pushed that back so they come in in 2019 instead. That gives him a boost of £8 billion to his um, forecast for the deficit in 2019. And it really is only these two policies that mean that he's now on course for a surplus in 2019. The spending cuts he may well be able to achieve, um, but he doesn't at this point feel able to tell us exactly how he will achieve them, and he's not going to be in a position to do that for another two years. The shuffling of money it's policy that has quite clearly been engineered with the sole purpose of reducing borrowing in that year um, at the expense of doing more borrowing in 2017 and 2018. So the first three points uh, are just what I said on the previous slide. One final thing to say about the surplus currently forecast for 2019 is that in the context of forecasting the public finances four years ahead, that surplus is relatively small. And it's very possible that over the next few years, the forecast could move in his favour or against him, meaning that further policy adjustments would are very likely to be required, possibly loosening, possibly further tightenings. So beyond 2019, the last year of the forecast yesterday suggests that he would continue to meet his mandate in 2020. How is he doing that? Um, well, he's forecast to have a £10 billion surplus in that year. Um, some of the policies that he announced yesterday, which just shuffle money around, continue to benefit him in that year uh, to the tune of about £4 billion. And on top of that, he's penciled in a further cut to public service spending of £10 billion. And without those two policies, he would have been on course for a deficit of £3 billion in 2020 as well. Looking beyond 2020, the fiscal mandate requires that, assuming normal times continue, George Osborne, or the, whoever is Chancellor beyond 2020, continues to have a surplus on the public finances. Um, the, whilst we don't know the precise figures uh, for that longer term period, there are a number of policies that were announced yesterday um, that will either raise less in tax revenues or will cost more from 2021 onwards than they do by 2020. Um, and it's worth bearing that in mind because it means that the combination of the downgrade to the underlying economic forecast with that package of measures means that the public finances will be weaker from 2021 onwards than they would have been uh, in the November, according to the November forecast. And that's going to make the fiscal mandate harder to meet in the longer term.